Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Sandy Alnock. I'm an artist and I make videos Tuesdays and Thursdays twice a week here on my channel, all different levels, a whole bunch of different mediums. And you are most welcome to subscribe as well as join me for the premiere. And the premiere of each video happens at 8 a.m. on Tuesdays and Saturdays. That's 8 a.m. Pacific. You can figure out what time that is in your zone. And I'm here chatting live with everyone in the chat box. And I would love to get to know you, hear about your artwork, answer your questions, and let's chat together and become community. Today, I want to mention before I get started on the robots that I voted. I hope you did as well. And if you are concerned that you're getting too many phone calls and people knocking at your door, if you can early vote. That is a good thing because early voting takes you off of the to-do list for all the people who are knocking on doors. They can see if you voted. They cannot see who you voted for. And to that end as well, if there's anybody in your life, in your household, telling you you have to vote for one person or another in any of the races, just know that you can quietly, in the secrecy of the ballot box, vote for whoever you want. And you don't have to tell anyone. So you can vote for who you would like to see in office. Not going to get partisan on this. I just want to make you aware of that. All right, let's get to the robots. I've been inspired by the idea of the wild robot coming out. I've been watching the ads for it all summer long and very excited about it. I have a date to go see it soon with my best friend. And I've been drawing some robots in the meantime. It's just been kind of a fun way to do some doodles. I'll show you an easy one a very simple way to do it. And I'm using watercolor pencils in both of these, by the way, but you can use other mediums. And I'm going to do a complex one as well with a lot more detail and a whole scene in it. And these are great projects that you can do with the kiddos, the grandkids, whoever in your life likes to make art and have some fun with it. And they're really easy to do. So let's get started on making robots. So let's talk about the supplies real quickly first. Ink Tense pencils, which are kind of a watercolor pencil, but they're more of an ink pencil. And I've swatched them out. I'm going to put this sheet on my blog if you want to look at the colors and see if there's a particular one you need. I will talk more about them in a more fine art drawing that I'll be doing in my next video. But for now, you can see what those colors are. I did find one place in the UK you could buy all 28 at once if you're a full set kind of person. I've updated the hex chart and it now has 100 colors rather than 72. If you already bought the 72, you've been notified to just go to your account and re-download. Now you can use all different kinds of mediums for the technique that I'm going to be talking about here. I'm using these ink tense pencils. You can use regular watercolor pencils. You can use watercolors. You can use just any, any kind of color you want. If you want to have soft edges to them, then you'll want to have something that you can blend with water, like watercolor markers, that sort of thing. But you, you can use even regular like alcohol markers just to make color blobs and then start developing your robot from that. But you won't be able to do like the kind of blending that I'll be doing here, but it's still the same process. I'm just placing these little blocks in random order. I'm not really thinking too much about them other than I want to have a body. I want to have some kind of mobility way for my robot to get around. So I'm going to have a wheel and maybe one leg, like a peg leg thing. And since Inktober is on, and this is the day for Navigator as the prompt, I put a little something, a little blue something in the robot's hand so that he can use that for navigating. And you'll see some other navigation opportunities <laughs> that I've given my others because I was just playing around with them. These were so much fun. So I'm using like dollops of water. This is not being skimpy with water. Nice big fat brush and in between major color changes and just rinsing the brush, picking up plenty of water so that the watercolor pencil will melt out. If you're using pencils that are difficult to melt out, don't even worry about that. I'm not going to try to make sure everything is perfectly blended here. I'm not worried about making perfect edges. 
this is what makes it great for kids to do this because they don't have to be super careful at all. And I'm using a big fat brush to do it as well. You don't even have to like get into any fine detail on the painting because the place where all that's going to come in is actually in the pen and ink portion. But I did decide to pick up some color from some of the areas that had that sort of thick paint, you know, lots and lots of color and just move blocks of it here and there making little, uh, you know, I don't know what they would be, maybe nuts and bolts sticking off of little areas, uh, small bars that might join different parts of the, um, the robot. I mean, there's, there's no real right or wrong to designing your own robot. I mean, if you're making one in real life, yes, you probably have to have parts in your robot that matter <laughs> so that your robot can get around and that sort of thing. But I'm making a little communicator here for him so he can use that for navigation. And then I'm just going to join it to other portions of these blobs of color. And literally all I'm doing is making lines around them. I'm not trying to be real careful with it. I'm using the color as a guideline for the shapes, but I'm just kind of tracing around them. The little pencil blobs that I did and when I added water to them, they weren't straight. So some of them I might straighten up, some of them I might turn into curves. And then others I'm going to put little nuts and bolts on, little circles, just any kind of doodly do that you want to add on to it, you can do that. I'm going to make a section here where the body kind of swings over to one side. I wanted him to be lopsided because in the other ones that I was practicing with, I was just having fun making them all different kinds of kitty wampus ways that they probably can't get around very well. I, I'm pretty sure that these, these robots I've drawn would not be particularly mobile. Uh, this one has a peg leg, as I said, and it also has a wheel. So the peg leg, maybe there's like a little teeny tiny laser ball on the top or on the, the very bottom end on the tip of the laser leg. And so he can move around on that. I don't really know. It, it was just a silly thing that felt like it would be fun to do with two completely different kinds of legs on this robot. And I'm going to do some horizontal lines to indicate the tire treads on the wheel. And you can see I'm with the pen and ink, I'm fixing any of the areas that were a little bit on the wonky side in the color. So the pen and ink allows you to kind of fix things that may have not worked out perfectly in the color. So it's so forgiving. You can just keep messing with it. I was trying to even out the, the ground down below them and I could just add more to it with the black pen. You can add in details outside of the color with black pen and fill them in with color if you want more color in them. But a lot of it, I just made little, little buttons, little nuts and bolts and that sort of thing in any place that I found interesting, made, you know, window shapes, anything that you can think of, you can put into your robot. You don't have to have as many spots as I do either. You can have a very simple body, you know, in the wild robot, the robots are much more streamlined. The robot is, you know, got a big round head and a big round body. You can do that kind of a thing and make it much, much simpler. Just a big blob of watercolor. It doesn't have to be watercolor pencil. But with these Inktense pencils, one of the things that is cool about them is that once they are on the paper, you can't lift them very well. And what that means is with regular watercolor pencils, if you have some watercolor pencil that's yellow next to some watercolor pencil that's blue, then if you, you know, water out the yellow part and then let it dry and then you water out the blue part, you still might get some areas where the yellow re-wets and pulls into the blue and makes a little green. Not so with ink tense pencils, at least not as much, because these are permanent I'm going to put permanent in quotes because you can move them if you work, work at it. But these are permanent when they dry, which means, you know, you saw me with the water. I just kept going over the whole thing with, with the water and I got bleeds of color. I got one color, you know, mushing into the other, which I was fine with. If you're not fine with it and you want to keep the yellow separate from that blue, then you can 
watercolor the, the yellow part and then let it dry, watercolor the blue part, and they won't lift each other. You'll end up with a nice crisp edge in between them. But here for this kind of a drawing, that's not super important because any of the areas that had weird blends in them, I just drew some pen lines over top of it and just kind of made it into something else. Drew in little blocks of something, put in little little tendrils, joining different parts together. You can draw yours with a face on it. If you want to have a face, you can have no face on it. There's a million different ways to create your own robot this way. And this is a great idea to save for a rainy day with the kids or the grandkids, anybody who uh, needs entertained. <laughs> and we've got winter coming, so there's going to be a lot of those kinds of days. And it would be a great little thing to have in your pocket to practice with kiddos because they have all kinds of imagination. And I promise you, they will not be nearly as persnickety as you are about, oh my goodness, what do I do here? What do I do? You just turn them loose. You could even like let them watch this video with you and they will totally get it and they will not need any extra help. You might, but they don't need any extra help. Now, this one was a way more advanced version, and I wanted to have my robot, since he's navigating, I wanted to have him sort of in the cockpit. Well, I'm not sure if this is what a cockpit would even look like, but I drew a circle in the center of my paper, just using a tape roll, and I'm making some perspective lines because I want this to look like he's in a kind of a long, skinny thing with a big window at the front where he's looking out at the stars. So I just put those guidelines in very loosely with the center point being the vanishing point. In perspective, you can have lots of different types of vanishing point things going on, but this is one point perspective with all of the, the different lines pointing one way. And you'll see what I mean as we get there. So I'm going to do the same thing with this one as I did with the other, just grabbing different pencils and adding in different blocks of color. And this this robot is going to be different because I'm just using different types of lines, different types of marks and different colors. Every time you do a robot like this, they're going to be completely different. And it was just fun to figure out like how many arms could he have so that he could go and, you know, be reaching to one button as well as another and then started in with the watercolor. And I'm using my brush to start in with the light colors first. So I started with like yellows and oranges and then move to the reds, rinse the brush and then go to the blues and the greens because your brush will pick up some color and transfer it to others. And if you end up completely transferring colors all the time, then you'll get a neutral eventually because red, blue and yellow together make brown. Now these robots would be cool in kind of brown rusty colors too. Uh, see the, the links in the doobly doo for a couple of robot artists. There's one guy who just makes the most beautiful robots. Oh my goodness. So beautiful. Some of them are digital and some of them are analog and he just does a wonderful job. And there's also a link to someone who was involved in the wild robot movie project. So if you are a wild robot movie fan, you want, want to go follow his account too. So I am doing the same thing here as I did on the previous one just following along the shapes and creating some refinement around edges of them. Just kind of looking to see where, where I want to add certain things. Now it started feeling a little crooked. My paper is crooked here on the screen, but in order to hide the fact that something is crooked, I just made some things more crooked, you know, feel free to adapt in any way that you want to. This guy has two wheels on him since the other one only had one wheel. I thought maybe I should make something a little more deliberate and he's got, you know, a, a little wheel and a big wheel. And then the, the body shapes are all completely different. I've got arms that have different kind of things sticking up off of them. I've put lots of bolts in here, just tons and tons of fine details. I'm giving him different uh, claws at the end of the different arms that he's got. So sometimes he'll have more like a finger. Other times it'll be more like a claw to grab things. And, you know, you could have all different kinds of appendages sticking off of it. A lot is going to depend on 
what your robot is supposed to be doing. Is he supposed to be navigating? Because in this particular case, that was what the challenge was for the prompt for Inktober. And if you're new and haven't heard about Inktober, it's something where people around the world get together in the month of October and on the Inktober Instagram account, I'll link that one in the doobly-doo too, um, on their account and on their website, they list some possible prompts for us all to use. So people around the world are using the same prompt. And today everybody's doing Navigator. And so that's what this one is. He's going to be the guy navigating the... Um, the, nav navigating the galaxies with his spaceship. I used a brush pen for the inking of that portion. You could use just a regular brush if you want. And then started kind of doodling in a little more detail for what I wanted to do with all of the, the floor and the ceiling and all those instrument panels that are going to be around the outside edges. So I'm putting some perspective lines in here. I'm not really worried about making sure they're all in the right place. I just want something so it feels like I've got a place where I'm pointing everything to, to that vanishing point. So the floor and the ceiling are going to be done the same way, painting water in first, and then I'm going to use powdered pigment. And this is using, in this particular case, a tea strainer that I got at my local grocery store. I just took the strainer end off of it, and I'm scraping pencil. This is a gray pencil and you could leave it and get all kinds of cool textures. You can add other colors to it while it's wet and I'm adding a, an orange to the gray so it'll start to feel kind of rusty. You can leave it as it is. You can move it with your brush, which is what I'm going to do, and just make it feel like a really rusty kind of floor. This whole ship is going to be a big old rust bucket. But I wanted the floor and the ceiling to be darker and the walls on the side to be lighter. So I'm Still going to be painting water into each of these sections and adding color to them. I'll just add less color because I added a whole bunch of it to the floor. And you can be in control of that when you're using your powdered pigment, but it takes a while to get used to how to do that. Now, the powdered pigment is only going to stick where there's water. So even though I'm just kind of sprinkling the powdered pigment across the whole thing, when I'm done, I can just with my breath blow on it and all of the, the pigment that is sitting right now on top of the, uh, the robot is just going to blow off. It's going to disappear. So that's one of the cool things. You can really be in control of where that color goes. So I'm doing the same thing on the ceiling, putting the two colors together, and then just using my brush to mush them around, move them uh, until they're the way that I want them to be. You know, I'm not worried about blending anything per perfectly. I just want to have some color there. And on the sides, I'm doing the lighter color. You can see there's even color left in my brush. So I'm getting a little bit of that tannish kind of color, but I'm going to add a little more of the pencil powder in the gray to just add some of that. And then I got to get it completely dried so that I'll be able to start doing the pen and ink work because you don't want to do your pen and ink when it's wet or you will be surprised by big blobs. So if you're working with the kiddos, make sure you give your painted work time to dry or use a hairdryer on it or something. I'll put a link to the dryer that I use in my studio in the supply list. Now for the flooring, all the horizontal lines are should be horizontal. Mine are not perfectly horizontal, but perspective-wise, the horizontal lines are horizontal and all of the ones that are pointing toward the vanishing point have to keep pointing that way. So you can see the value in having some underlying lines. I can just barely see them underneath the paint, but it helps me to get each section pointing toward the same vanishing point. Now on this panel on the left side, I decided to try to see what it would look like if this looks like a flat panel that he's you know, reaching across to navigate on the little map. I put some cabinets down below. Notice verticals are going to be vertical, just like the horizontals are horizontal. And even if they're not perfect, you know, that, that's the aim is to try to get your verticals vertical that I just kept kind of fussing with to try to get them to be that way. Um, but the rest of it, you know, the other lines point toward the horizon uh, or the vanishing point. Now this side, I decided to try something a little different. It's very subtle, but I wanted to see what would happen if I tried to make my panels curved. So these are following the curve of the window 
rather than making a flat panel on the uh, left-hand side. I just wanted to see if that would work better or worse. And it's just another way to make an experiment out of a doodle. If you've ever wondered whether a particular type of shape is going to work on a drawing, this is where doing practice drawings really help. I want to try a drawing like this and do something a little more tight. This is a very loose kind of doodle sketch. I want to try something like this again and try it in another medium and see what else I can do to make it feel more realistic than this. So this is a great practice in order to get to the point where I can do what I want to do in a larger piece and still have something really cool in a doodle format, but I'm getting a lot of practice in so that I'm ready for creating something a little bigger next time. So here I'm just making a few of the lines that I had already drawn in, making some of those into panel sections for all of the little buttons. And then it's just a matter of getting creative with each of the kind of buttons you put in. When I'm drawing in like those three little, um, little clock face type of gauges, they get smaller as they get into the distance. That's another thing that perspective will do because everything in here is in perspective. It's all getting smaller as it gets toward that window and bigger as it comes closer to the viewer. So doing the same thing with any shapes that are in there. If, you're, if you've got a row of buttons, they're going to get smaller as they get toward the, um, the window. But this was just a whole heck of a lot of fun to just doodle like a crazy person. <laughs> just draw a whole bunch of things, imagining what buttons these would be. And someday I, I would almost like to record my inner chatter if I could figure out how to do that. Because I was like, oh, well, this is the button he would press in order to do this. And here's where he would order dinner. Oh, and maybe this one would be where, um, you know, a, a team member on the, um, on the ship staff would like order up some food. You know, do they have one of the, is this ship fancy enough that it has one of those replicators in it? Like, who knows? I, I'm inventing my own ship. I can make every one of these buttons into whatever I want. But I didn't record any of that because it was all just going along in my head. So there you go. My crazy robot drawing. Let me know which of these robots you liked the best. And are you going to try to make some robots yourself? Do you have some littles who you're going to invite to do it with you? I would love to know. And these robots are going to make another appearance in a particular way coming up later in November. So stay tuned for that. Got a little something cooking in the background. I will see you again later on. Take care. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. I'll be back in my next video with more on these Inktense pencils. I'll see you then. Take care. Bye.